Hello and welcome to Reporters on France 24. I'm Rochelle ferguson Buyahi. In this edition, we focus on India's fight against superbugs, which are essentially infections resistant to antibiotics. Well, since the 1940s, when they were first introduced to medicine, antibiotics have been vital to modern healthcare. These days, however, once treatable infections are increasingly difficult to cure and patient mortality is rising. Well, India has one of the highest healthcare burdens from antibiotic resistance bacteria in the world, a problem that's already reached one of the country's highest courts. Our reporters explore how India's dealing with the global threat. For Dr. Asadullah Khan, the last three years have been tough. Habi, how are things going on? We are processing the bacteria culture. Okay. Back in 2013, the chief scientist of a large hospital in North India made an accidental discovery that put fear in the hearts of physicians across the world. I took the sample from a hospital sewage, uh, keeping in view that the drain coming out from the hospitals may have some bugs which are having resistance uh, marker in it. So accidentally, uh, we got a sequence of NDM4. NDM4? is a strain of bacteria that is resistant to most antibiotics in existence. People began calling it the superbug. What Dr. Khan found in the drain outside Aligarh's largest hospital was a nightmare. It explained why patients inside the hospital were dying of common infections. I mean, it was very obvious. I mean, when the doctors start uh, treating patients, patients are not cured. They start first line of antibiotic, second line of antibiotic, third line of antibiotic. Doc, patients are not cured, they're dying. And the mortality and morbidity rate is going up. The only thing is that preventive measure, you, 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 you block the spread. Preventing the spread is easier said than done. Today, drug resistance exists across the world. But the situation is dire in India, where overcrowded hospitals, combined with increased antibiotic use, have created the perfect breeding ground for superbugs to thrive. At a historic meeting in September 2016, the United Nations defined antibiotic resistance as the greatest healthcare threat facing the world. Antimicrobial resistance poses a fundamental long-term threat to human health, sustainable food production and development. It's not that may happen in the future. It's a very present reality. By 2050, the deadly superbug will claim more lives than cancer. The toll is expected to rise to 10 million a year and will cost the global economy $100 trillion to tackle. India is on the front lines of that battle. Each year, nearly 60,000 newborn babies die due to antibiotic resistance in the country. In this large hospital in central India, Dr. Patak is worried about the fate of his most vulnerable patients. Okay. So, so we have kept him for completion of antibiotics. It's a rare good day for Dr. Patak. None of his newborn patients have shown signs of resistance yet. So the child is uh, doing well on our antibiotics, so we are lucky. Why do you say lucky? Because many times we do see organisms which are not sensitive to our routine line of treatment and then we have really have to struggle to get those patients out. Over his two decades as a doctor, he has seen a sharp rise in cases of resistance. We used to see uh, organisms which are resistant, but maybe the frequency was low, 10% of all. Now, I think we have moved to a stage of mainly, mainly 50% of those uh, that we are seeing are uh, resistant to first line. Some scientists estimate that nearly 75% of India's 1.3 billion people already carry drug-resistant bacteria in their bodies. So I think in India what we lack most is lack of hygiene and infection control practices within the hospital. That is the first thing which we need to do. To that end, 
Dr. Patak has organized a large training session for the nurses and doctors of his hospital today. Should we begin? Okay. First, he lays out the threat. So this is what this slide tells you that in the last from 80s to 2000 and till date, there is no new class of antibiotic. And I'm promising you for the next 10 years, there is no new class of antibiotic inside. He's not entirely right, as we'll see later. First step, like this, bonding of your fingers. Then you have to spread it. Then fingertips. Then fan. Or is kibarni fingertips. It's simple. It's a small but useful measure. The first step in the battle against the deadly superbug. Such sessions are very useful. They enable us to understand how and when to use antibiotics. How and when to use antibiotics is part of the problem. Despite laws discouraging it, most Indians can simply walk to a pharmacy and buy powerful antibiotics without a prescription. Our reporter was able to do just that outside a large hospital and recorded the exchange on a hidden camera. Do you have walamycin? Walamycin is a strong antibiotic commonly used for patients in surgery. How much is it? 30 rupees. Popping pills without a prescription and consumption of incorrect dosage are major reasons for why so many Indians have developed resistance to these miracle drugs. The problem is made worse by livestock farming. We travel to a large chicken farm on the outskirts of New Delhi, where over 500,000 birds are raised for consumption in the capital. How much feed have you prepared? 18 kilos. The animal feed includes a mind-boggling number of components. In this feed, there's corn, soya, feed supplements, all the antibiotics. There's FC10, it's for vitamins, choline chloride, and vitamin premix. Most chicken farmers refer to antibiotics as vitamins. Use of antibiotics in animals is projected to more than double in India by 2030. Antibiotics, you there. Antibiotics. In order to protect the bird from any illness before it's fully grown, it's part of the bird's balanced diet. Without it, there will be deficiencies and the bird will be weak. If it's weak, it won't grow properly. While antibiotics are helping to sustain food production, doctors worry their uncontrolled use on farms is turning animals into carriers of the deadly superbug. On this farm, the chickens are fed an antibiotic-rich diet from day one. This is the feed system. The use of antibiotics is known to speed growth in animals, a fact that he is well aware of. It used to take 50 days for the chickens to be ready. Now it takes 40 days. As far as medicines and antibiotics go, we follow whatever our advisors tell us based strictly on government guidelines. If there's something wrong, the government should train the farmers. If farmers are trained not to use something, they won't. In 2011, a panel advising the Indian government called for restrictions on antibiotic use in animals. Five years later, there are still no regulations governing the use of medicines for livestock. So far, victims of antibiotic resistance have remained in the shadows. But in early 2017, a landmark case came up for hearing before the Delhi High Court. This man, who doesn't want to reveal his identity, has sued the Indian government on behalf of his 18-year-old daughter. 
She was diagnosed with TB in 2013 and we soon discovered that she was resistant to first and second line drugs. In response to rising cases of drug-resistant TB, the government stringently controls the distribution of Bedicaline, the only drug that still works. He's now demanding the government release the drug for his daughter. It was my daughter who told me to fight a legal battle. I asked whether that will save her life. She said maybe not, but at least it will give others access to this drug. The government's argument is that if they make the drug available in the open market, patients will inadvertently misuse it and develop resistance to it. Leading the battle is one of India's most prominent human rights lawyer. Basically, there has to be a balance between the resistance and saving a life. The most likely uh, scenario, if she doesn't get benefit, is that she will not be here after three to six months. But if there's any hope for the future, it is at the Center for Cellular and Molecular Research in Bangalore, where a tiny company called Bugworks is dreaming big. Dr. Bala Subramaniam, the chief scientist, is close to a breakthrough that will have a huge impact on global healthcare. This box contains the various antibiotics that we create. One among these vials will actually turn out to be the novel antibiotic, which then kills all the superbugs. The last new antibiotic to hit the open market was three decades ago. Bugworks is amongst a handful of global companies that could end up discovering a new generation of miracle drugs. We basically tested about a, about a thousand mice to be able to actually get to the point where we know our compounds, our antibiotics are actually working effective against the superbugs. Testing on mice has already produced promising results. So these are the superbugs growing on the plate, which after the experimentation we know that using the new antibiotics that we can kill them. And uh, what you see on the right side is where you don't see a kill. And with the addition of the new antibiotics on the left side, you actually now see that there's a significant kill of these superbugs. But there's a long way to go and many regulatory hurdles to jump through. At best, it could take six to seven years before this drug is made available for human use. The situation today is that we can very quickly slip to a point in time where there were no antibiotics, what we call as a pre-antibiotic era, where even the simple medical practice in terms of treating simple wounds or the more complex surgeries are absolutely unthinkable. And it's because of these superbugs. So we are clearly racing against time. For India, it truly is a race against time. Each year, nearly 3 million people in the country develop resistance to antibiotics. Stemming this tide is crucial, a task that India will need to prioritize in the coming years. Well, for more on that report, Mandakini Gallot joins me from New Delhi. Mandakini, your report begins with a chief scientist discovering the NDM4, a deadly mutation of a resistant strain of bacteria. That was back in 2012. Was that the first indication of antibiotic resistance in India? Uh, no, it wasn't. Now, while the discovery of NDM4 was certainly very important because it indicated that superbugs were thriving in public hospitals, alarm bells about superbugs had been set off at least five years before that. Back in 2009, uh, doctors and researchers in a Swedish hospital found a unique strain of a bacteria in a patient who had recently traveled to India and been treated uh, for a minor infection in a New Delhi hospital. Now, in practice, uh, in keeping with scientific practices, they named this bacteria New Delhi Metallo Beta Lactamase 1 or NDM1 and published their findings uh, in uh, the journal Lancet later that year. Now, this triggered a huge debate in India, including in the Indian Parliament, where lawmakers were furious that this bacteria had been named after the country's capital. They called it a deliberate attempt to malign the country. In fact, so furious was the outrage that two years later, in 2011, the Lancet was forced to publicly apologize to Indian authorities. By then, of course, NDM1 had spread to over 70 countries and precious time had been lost arguing over the naming of the bacteria instead of formulating a response 
to what has now become uh, the greatest healthcare threat, not just for India, but across the world. Some patients are now taking their cases to court. What happened to the young girl with drug-resistant TB whose father appealed to the court to provide her with some life-saving medicine? This was a unique case. Now, in good news, shortly after we finished filming this report, the Delhi High Court directed the Indian government to immediately release the drug Bedicaline uh, to this young girl. We don't know how well she's responding to it. The court also directed the government to make access to this drug a little bit easier. Uh, but the fact is, and this is backed by the scientific community, that if this drug is made available in pharmacies across the country, uh, then patients will inadvertently misuse it or overuse it and then develop resistance to it as well. So uh, this is hardly the last time uh, we're going to see patients going to court to get access to medicines. Rights uh, activists here have already turned their attention to another drug, uh, Delamanid, access to which is also very tightly controlled. So Amanda Keeney, ultimately it's likely that uh, Indians will see access to antibiotics tightened even further in the coming years. Uh, yes, there are various policies in place uh, already. For example, uh, antibiotics sold in Indian pharmacies have to carry a red band and cannot be sold without a prescription. Of course, that doesn't always translate into practice. Uh, now. It's crucial to recognize that antibiotics still save millions of lives in, uh, in rural areas across the country where there are no primary or secondary healthcare centers. Sometimes access to antibiotics is uh, the only thing between life and death for somebody suffering from a minor infection. So this tricky balance between increasing appropriate access to antibiotics while limiting inappropriate access is uh, going to confound healthcare experts across the world uh, in the years to come. Amanda Keeney reporting for us from New Delhi. Thank you. For our viewers, don't forget you can watch the report on India's battle with superbugs on our website at france24.com. That was reporters. Thank you very much for watching.